Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome back to a brand new series of the 51% of Sherba women reshaping our world coming up. We take a look at Kamala Harris, who's demolished numerous barriers in a distinguished career, many hoping her nomination as the Democrats' vice presidential candidate will help carry Joe Biden into the White House. We'll also be talking to Professor Herminia Ibarra, a specialist in leadership and career development, on what will it take to dismantle the boys' club in the workplace. And the ultimate challenge, we meet the women who've decided to serve in the French Special Forces. But first, and with her nomination as the Democratic vice presidential candidate, Kamala Harris has made history. She's become the first ever black and Asian woman to join a major party ticket. Born to a Jamaican father and an Indian mother, Harris has spent her career breaking barriers. Catherine Viet takes a closer look at the trailblazer. Speaking. Breaking the glass ceiling. I accept your nomination for vice president of the United States of America. Kamala Harris becomes only the third woman nominated for vice president and the first woman of color. In her acceptance speech, Harris paid tribute to her mother. My mother instilled in my sister Maya and me the values that would chart the course of our lives. She raised us to be proud, strong black women. And she raised us to know and be proud of our Indian heritage. Born to a Jamaican father and an Indian mother, Harris spent her formative years in Berkeley, California, and was raised by her mother after her parents' divorce. Choosing a career in public service, Harris started off as a prosecutor before being elected San Francisco's district attorney. From there, she made history by becoming California's first female attorney general. Another barrier would break when she became the state's first black senator sent to Washington. While her presidential bid would fall short, her achievements impressed eventual nominee Joe Biden, who selected her as his running mate. Senator Kamala Harris, she's a powerful voice for this nation. For many women, Harris's achievements are inspiring. You see that person that looks like you as the vice president, president or you see that person as the CEO of the company, um, it changes everything. Bringing diversity, tenacity and energy to the ticket, her supporters hope the enthusiasm Harris generates will help translate to votes this November. Now, while Kamala Harris's nomination is important on so many levels, it's also an example of a man in power giving an opportunity to a woman and a woman of colour. That doesn't happen as often as it should, thanks to the boys' club mentality that still dominates so many organisations. An authority on leadership and career development, Herminia Ibarra, is a professor of organisational behaviour at London Business School. She has also served on the INSEAD and Harvard Business School faculties and joins me now from London. Herminia, thank you so much for your time. The Boys Club is still up and running in many organisations, this despite a record number of women entering the workplace. Yes, of course it is. Of course the Boys Club is up and running. The numbers are still predominantly male across any uh, organization or really occupation that you have a look at. And this is despite, uh, Annette, decades of trying to fix this uh, and spending lots of money and energy on, on programs and on initiatives, um, both grassroots and top down to try to fix the problem. So there's something intractable here, but it's still very much alive and well today. Herminia, however, some argue that regardless of taking steps to dismantle the boys club, that nothing is actually going to change until there's at least 30% of women in senior leadership roles in a company. Would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely, Annette. Research really bears this out. Um, it's very hard to influence a group from a minority standpoint. Certainly as a token, you're just one voice and you're very easily discounted. You need allies. But the problem is once you once you're two, there's a real dynamic in which you become, you know, one's the good woman and the other one's the the bad or the faulty or the aggressive one. Once you start getting more numbers, then people can be seen as individuals bringing their own voice, their own perspective, as opposed to somehow speaking for or representing their gender. 
And with a global recession underway, many organisations are downsizing and offering redundancies now. And the worry is that women in their mid-careers are deciding to take the money and walk away, some claiming that they're frustrated at the lack of support offered by management. That surely must be a concern for companies across the globe. This is a really understudied question, but anecdotally, the word is that's exactly what is happening. As women calculate their prospects for advancement, for raises, for promotions, they're seeing that not happening. They're seeing exactly the boys club come together and protect his own and not necessarily offer a sunny perspective um, for the women uh, to stay on in the organisation. So how do you break down boys clubs in the workplace? You know, I think it's both an individual thing and an organizational thing. Um, as an individual, it's hard to do. And what I recommend and what research suggests is that what you, you build an extensive, diverse and powerful as possible network that reaches out into your industry, outside the organization, so that you're not begging to be let into the inner circle, but people come to you because they know you have information, you've got connections, you've got perspective that's valuable. Uh, from the perspective of the organization, what they need to do is really pay attention to who's mentoring whom, who's getting the plum assignments that allow that network to get developed, because ultimately networks develop as people work together and build trust without paying attention Attention to those dynamics, networks are necessarily going to be exclusive. Now, you've talked about in the past about sponsorship as opposed to mentoring. What exactly is the difference? Mentors are people who want to help you out. They've got experience, they've got knowledge, and they're going to share it with you so that you can grow and develop. Sponsors also help it in a very different way. They've got institutional power and they're gonna use it for you. They're gonna say, she needs to get promoted. She's ready for that role. They're in the room where it happens and they're gonna speak in your favor. It's a big, big difference. But in a post Me Too era, isn't it difficult for men to actively support and promote their more junior female colleagues? Right. So that's been a huge topic of discussion. And there is certainly that worry is out there. My own perspective is that it's it's a bit overplayed, that it's used as a bit of an excuse because, you know, frankly, you don't need to go into a candlelit restaurant in order to have a mentoring conversation with a junior colleague. You can have it in the cafeteria. You can have it in your office with the door open. There's lots of different ways in which that can happen without necessarily putting people in in a position uh, for that kind of gossip uh, to go around. Do you think we're ever going to see a day where boys clubs don't exist? That's a hard question. You know, it's um, the, the basis for all of this is a very simple thing. Likes attract. We are more likely to have a conversation and bond with somebody who reminds us of us. And gender is one of the ways in which that happens. Um, I think your starting point is the right one. We've got to get the critical mass going uh, in order for that to happen. And once there's lots of us, <laughs> it's a lot easier for people to find the deeper roots of what the, it is that they have in common. Herminia Barra, thank you so much for your time. Now, women only make up some 4% of French Special Forces. It's a low figure, especially when you take into account that it's been 30 years since females were first allowed to join these units. Our colleagues of France 2 Television went to meet those who've made it their career. A firm reminder of how to open their backup parachutes. These commandos are members of the Special Forces. Their identities kept anonymous. Leah, a pseudonym, is a paratrooper. She's one of the few women to hold the lives of elite soldiers in her hands. Today is a training mission, but a real operation is carried out the same way. Members have to jump with more than 80 kilos of equipment. Leah checks everyone's parachutes one last time. She'll give the order for the jump. The commandos must be prepared to infiltrate enemy lines day or night. There's no room for error. They're ready to go, but the jump is canceled because of the weather. 
There are 4,000 Special Forces troops, most part of the French Army, but only 4% of those soldiers are women. At 33 years old, Leah is married and has two small children. Depending on her mission, she can be away from her family for months at a time, even in a war zone. We do think about it. We are aware of it, but that's not what will stop us, in fact. It's just there, in the back of our minds. There's fear, yes, because that's what makes us remain suspicious and on guard. So long as it doesn't paralyze us, fear can be effective. Women joining the Special Forces unit undergo the same training as their male counterparts. They earn their place by being beyond reproach. Angie is a pilot. She flew this combat helicopter in Mali. I was integrated very quickly. I was never pushed aside. I was treated like the others. No, I think I made the worst comments to avoid being bothered. Fitting in is what was easier. It wasn't playing the women's card exactly, but playing the friend card, one who's hanging out with the others. In addition to being a paratrooper, Leah also gathers intelligence. On the ground, she analyzes the behavior of the enemy. It's been 30 years since the special forces were integrated, but only a handful of women have managed to break into the top ranks of this boys' club. And that's it for this edition. You can also connect with us via our Facebook page, that of course being France24.51%, or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. So until our next show, bye for now.